This Table Talk is made possible by Mental Health Matters, a newsletter from the Mighty.com. I'm Camera, and I'm joined by... I'm Sky. I'm Kat. I'm Carla. And today we are going to be talking about people pleasing and how our health conditions can kind of play a role into that. I know that people pleasing is a very big topic that we all can talk about of like what we feel, how we we relate in that way of needing to please. Why is that? Do we have it versus our health condition or is it versus the way we were grown up or whether we do it for our mental health? But Sky, I want to like toss it to you. What does people pleasing look like in your life? Are you a people pleaser or no? Or where have you ever been? Yeah, so I am a recovering people pleaser, I'd say. It's something I've been working on ooh, since college, probably. Um, kind of goes along with my feelings of guilt or like I'm the, you know, feeling like I'm the cause of everybody's problems or I need to fix everything. People pleasing has gotten me into some sticky situations with my health, you know, trying to push through things or agreeing to activities that I know would hurt me in the long run, like going on a lot of walks in nature or hikes just because I liked a boy. That happened a lot. Sky, I have a question then. Does your health cause you to overcompensate and be a people pleaser or does your people pleasing affect your health negatively? Oh, that is such a good question. I think it's my people pleasing affects my health negatively, like especially when I didn't have a diagnosis or like a label for most of the things, you know, health wise I was going through. And stigma plays a large part in that too. Like, you know, I never wanted to be like, yeah, my depression's getting in the way of me doing anything right now. Got to cancel. Like I would push through it. Or when I didn't know why all my joints hurt all the time, I'd be like, yes, I would love to walk on uneven terrain with you. Like that sounds like my idea of a great time. And then, you know, I'd be in bed for the next two days in immense pain. And I felt like with all these things, I just never had a valid excuse to turn people down. So I'd be like, yeah, let me take on everything because that'll make you like me or that'll make you think I'm a hard worker or that I'm smart. Always trying to look the best that I can in other people's eyes. Meanwhile, you know, I'm not doing great as a result. Cad, how about you? I will say ditto. I was going to say, I will I will just copy and co-sign everything you just said. I think it affects me both ways. Um, Carla, I'm curious what your experience is. When it started, I early 1980s something go into the first grade and my teacher every single day was, I shouldn't have to help you. This isn't my job. So I learned not to ask for help. I learned that independence was the only thing that mattered and people aren't nice to you when you need help. So I have spent the next 40 years of my life making sure I didn't need anybody's help and that I was always the one lending the hand and not asking for it. And it was just so people wouldn't be mean to me. And it was sort of a, a way of validation, you know, in a weird way, because that way, you know, people think, oh, you do so good and stuff like that. When you're drowning, hurting yourself, trying to do it just so you don't have to relive those feelings. So I guess that's my form of people pleasing. Oh, my gosh, that's so relatable, Carla. I feel like the overcompensation, like people pleasing at its core can be this, I need to meet expectation and I am doing everything in my power to overcompensate for whether it's a health condition or my mental health or feeling like, like for me, like with my ADHD or my triggers, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to overcompensate because of feeling like I'm not like everyone else or feeling like my, my brain works differently than everyone else. So I need to overcompensate so people still think I'm a good person. Like that's such a weird, a weird way that our minds can kind of play tricks on us. So it's interesting that all of you have talked about kind of in a way the negative part of people pleasing, which I do think at its core, like it sounds pleasing naturally is like a positive sensation, right? And so that always brings the question to me, like who actually benefits from people pleasing? Is it the people who are getting pleased or is it us, the people who are doing the pleasing? And I, I want to share a positive anecdote, which is like how I came to the mighty. So I, I came to the mighty looking for community myself a year after transition to being on the community team. And one thing I really learned about myself since being on this team is that like, I love taking care of people. The selfless act that I can provide, I'd like to make people feel heard. I'd like to make them feel comfortable. And that's like led me to a new career. So like, yes to people pleasing in that aspect from a non-professional level and in my personal life, really want to tone it down. But I do love what people pleasing has brought me externally. I'm glad to hear, yeah, like that 
that positive take on it. I definitely feel like, you know, I think that people pleasing's working. My like relationships and how I interact with others, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll push myself to do these things because this is what the person wants. Meanwhile, I've never asked them what they want. And after, you know, all this people pleasing and then I get the, um, well, you could do X, Y, Z thing today or yesterday. Why can't you do the same thing today? And it's because I've burnt out people pleasing. By the time I get to that point and I finally have to come clean and say like, hey, this isn't working for me. Like I'm in pain and I just wanted to make you happy. You know, the other person kind of gets frustrated and they're like, well, why didn't you just say something to begin with? It can be a difficult cycle. I also feel like with my health conditions, I try to people please healthcare providers a lot. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, maybe it stems from my being a teacher's pet, which I never like really thought of myself as. I just really liked when my teachers liked me and approved of me. Yeah, I feel that if somebody ever got mad at me or scolded me, that was a year ruined. (laughs) Still think about fifth grade. Anyway, but yeah, so with like doctors, because I'm somebody who lives with chronic pain as a result of my conditions, I always try to be like the quote unquote model pain patient. And I'm like, I will do whatever you tell me. Like, don't stop taking care of me. I've had other doctors give up on me. Like, please, please still see me. And I promise I'm not drug seeking. I promise I'm not like other chronic pain patients, which does it's like stigma thing again. It like does a disservice to myself. It does a disservice to my community of like fellow patients. That's a really tricky one for me that I'm still working on. <laughs> a few things. Um, patients I may not have otherwise had because I mean, you know, if you don't have that people pleasing aspect, sometimes your own opinions can really crowd out all the noise in the room. But in your people pleasing, you really want to hear what the other person has to say. And I don't know that I would have ever been as open to learn more about other people if I just didn't want to be that pleasant person that they could talk to. And I feel like it is something that has allowed me to tone my own voice down enough to get to know people in a way maybe I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. That's kind of the way I try to look at it. Am I trying to people please myself? That's a possibility, but that's the story we're going with right now in in my mind. That's so valid, Carla. I feel like trying to figure out the balance of it and where it's coming from is very real. And I remember hearing once is, and this is kind of more of a like to just check in with yourself. I've heard this term and I want to know how this makes y'all feel and what you believe within it. Because I don't think that we are necessarily selfish for being people pleasing, but people pleasing inherently apparently is a selfish trait to protect. It's very self-conscious, like kind of anxious. You're not necessarily thinking about what is it like Kat, like the other people need or want. Like I, you are assuming and kind of putting that out there. So it can be like an interesting thing to check in and is like, is this a selfish people pleasing trait that is happening? Or is this something that people actually want? I always find that fascinating. Whoa, I've never like I because earlier I had said it was a selfless thing, but you're totally right. And I think that brings up the point is that like people pleasing is either a really good coping mechanism or it's a real, real bad way to like resolve yourself of the guilt or like not feel because like I think that think that's when people pleasing works to my detriment. Like I like I'm just so bad at conflict. Like it's just it's something I've worked on my whole adulthood. I have a really hard time approaching people and telling them how I'm feeling in a non-professional environment. For some reason here, I'm able to give my opinion all day long, but I just cannot do that in my personal life. So I think that translates itself to just wanting to please everyone else. But then at the end of the day, I'm stopping myself from growing and I'm just kind of defaulting to this position of like lifting other people up, going along with things I don't necessarily want to. And in a way, I guess it is kind of a selfish thing. I'm doing what feels best to me may not be the best for the environment. Oh, camera busted my brain wide open in the best way. Yeah, camera that just kind of broke my brain. What an interesting perspective that I Yeah, even saying like, oh, I just assumed this person wanted me to act this way. Yeah, that's, yeah, (laughs) that's pretty selfish. And it's funny because like, I feel like that's the exact opposite of how people pleasers will want to be perceived or how they think, (laughs) yeah, how they think of what they're doing. Yeah, like, you know, I've actively been working on the, I will give my opinion of what I want for dinner, you know, rather than the whatever you want, whatever you want, which clearly stresses out the other person. I mean, that's kind of like a, a minuscule example of that, but that comes to mind. 
No, that is such a good example. So my partner and I, Mike, we have talked about this like literally our entire relationship with. I always used to be the person who was like, whatever you want to do for dinner. And what he explained to me is that made it so much more stressful on him. It didn't make him feel like he had a choice. It made him feel at the very long day that he had to have the ruling judgment when really he wanted to be told what he was having for dinner because I would knew what he liked. It took something off of his plate. So inherently by me thinking I'm making this easier for him, it was something that was causing him intense stress at the end of the day. And ever since we flipped the script, I just decide what we're having for dinner as long as I know he'll like it. And like the end of our days have been so joyous. Because, like, I just took that thing out of his metaphorical backpack. So, actually, that was a great example, the dinner thing, since I had a real-life anecdote. Yeah, direct and assertive communication, you know. Did you know? Wild. Therapists are on to something. <laughs> Gosh, I love that. Yeah, it is. It's like how sometimes people-pleasing can be putting something on to the other person. Like, they didn't ask for this gift or they didn't ask for this decision that you think is helping them. Oh, that's so real. It's like, where is the people pleasing coming from? And what what is it actually doing? And you look inward. It's like, and also you're kind of building this new version of yourself that isn't even what you want or even what you know you want. Self-reflection is either really scary or really like good for you. I'm not sure yet which it is. So let's get into a quick little speed round of what are the final tips of how to break the people-pleasing perfection, the people-pleasingness, the appeasing of others that isn't what they necessarily want. How have y'all worked on that? Whether you're still working on it or have worked on it and grown, what are the the tips for for those to get out of the people-pleasing habits? Well, I just realized something I've been working on for like OCD treatment could actually apply really nicely to this. I've been doing this thing where if I have like an intrusive thought or if I'm like if I don't do x like this bad thing will happen I've been just saying oh random thought and like trying like purposefully focusing on something else or like random thought you little silly goose I don't know that's kind of like endearing whatever but I realize like with people pleasing usually the thoughts like well if I make the choice they're gonna hate me they're gonna whatever and it's the spiral so I guess even then you could be like oh random thought like what do I like doing like you can like Kat said that self-reflection I think it is both scary and super beneficial. And honestly, check in with yourself. See what you like. Like Camera said, the origins of that people pleasing. Think if it's serving you or harming you. And then really talk to the other people around you and say, hey, how can we communicate better or what works best for you? And I think just that'll help relationships a ton, including the relationship with yourself. I don't know what to say, to be honest with you, because this is the part where I struggle. I've been, I want to play down the, the people pleasing part of me, but I know it's a big part and I'm just starting to recognize that now. So really right now I'm, I'm just working on figuring out who I am and what I like. And right now that takes up everything I've got. That is a tip. Start, start with yourself. I think that that's a great tip. And that's actually probably where I was going to go is one thing I've learned about people pleasing because I I really still think it's an inherent part of my personality. It's actually one thing that I really like about myself. But I think where it gets me into trouble is that I never associated people pleasing with boundaries. And I think that that's that's what I've been working on. What are my boundaries? Can I set them? Does pleasing someone take me past my boundary? If it does, I ain't going to do it. If it's below my boundary, then I ask myself, does it help the other person or does it help me? And that framework has been actually working really nicely for me. What about you, Camera? That's fantastic. Yeah, just because something helps you doesn't mean it hurts the other person. I think it is really reflecting like in a moment where you want to people please or if you feel like, oh, no, I said the wrong thing or this person needs me to do this thing is like really take a moment with yourself and be like, where is this coming from? Do I actually want slash need to do this? Is showing up in this way really going to benefit me? Because people will respect you more and actually like see you for yourself if you are making honest decisions that feel good in your gut and that feel good to you. Like like Carla, like you're saying, like getting to know yourself better, like that takes so much time and actually working inward and finding that is like kind of the start. And I've learned like taking pauses. It's taking that pause of like not wanting to immediately fix something or not wanting to immediately like, oh, I should go do this nice thing or yeah, I should commit to this thing just because it'll make this person happy. It's like, but will it? Will it make you happy? Make sure that there's an even playing ground there. So thank you all and for being here today and sharing your tips and your experiences within health and people pleasing. It is, I feel like an ongoing thing, but I feel like we've grown so much and learned, learned so much over the years. If you want more conversations like this, subscribe to Mental Health Matters by going to bit.ly slash mh 
inbox. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash M-H inbox. We'll see you in your inbox. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.